In this video, we'll see if we can make something quick and fun in JSON, and therefore it is a pretty advanced video. It's uh, dealing with React's so configuration tab and how we can program this using JSON. If you press that little edit raw button, then you see JSON code that is underpinning our layer tree. And uh, we can separate this out for the demonstration. Uh, when you look at the JSON that gives you this, then you see there's a name, there are uh, layers. Apparently, there's only like one layer, and that layer is default blue pill configuration. This guy, it has a key map that maps anything defined inside it for panel one to panel one, which is one to one. And then it is, by the way, pointing to a configuration file for blue pill generic, which is then what happens when you open this one up. Everything you see in here is actually in that file. I can hold down option in here. No, wait. Uh, command on my Mac keyboard, press it, and it will then jump to that file and show you further configuration that you're looking at here. So um, for instance, uh, what we see is some metadata, which we won't uh, spend much time on now. We have the name for the blue pill. We have behaviors. We see bottom half, bottom strip. These are these behaviors defined right here. And then we also see top half. So if you want to see how are these um, graphics, because they are really just there to provide the feedback for the graphics on the blue pill, which is this little device that is, oh, I have such a mess of cables on my, oh, I can't show you. Uh, okay, let me see, I just untangle this. Voila, this is our blue pill. And what you see in that display is being driven by this code that you see right here. So I have uh, some built-in uh, embedded PNG files that I'm adding to the display for the top half. The bottom half is probably pretty similar, just using another one. So yeah, I cheated. I prepared graphics from Photoshop and then put them inside the embedded file system on the blue pill. Bottom strip down here is uh, taking the IP address out and putting it into some graphic composition, which is actually a part of React I'm very proud of because it gives you essentially like a Photoshop layer on layer in layer engine that allows you to embed graphics and text in various ways. So have your fun looking at that. Not what we'll be looking at today. Today we'll be dealing with um, creating something on our own. I'll just add a new panel so that we can make a little routing panel for a video hub. And uh, I want to add a device, see if we can find something on the network that we like. Um, I'm typing video hop in the hope that we have a video hop on the network that will appear. Oh, there we go. This is the one that I was looking for. And um, I think I'm connected to it also on, on this one here. So we can see what's, what's going on. I know that we have these unconnected output shelf uh, six, it says here. So that would... Um, allow us to, to play a little bit with these two outputs. And that's what we'll do today. Add a panel. Uh, we need to, uh, we'll just pick one manual because we're going to work completely virtual here. So what should we pick? Um, something, uh, I think the MK4, which is a mega panel accessory panel. Uh, this one is, uh, it's, it's pretty neat. It's just like a shot box kind of panel that has all these like 42 buttons that we can use or misuse any way we want. Uh, but what happens automatically when you add panels is that we also pick a configuration for you. And in this case, it's the quick class. Quick class means that we can uh, basically add configurations to these. We have a ton of configurations that would give you all sorts of utility functions like ATEM, audio input, macro selections, su uh, super source control, video switching, AJ Kumo routing, you see all these vMix, video hub related things. So the quick classes, um, yeah, actually, why not just, why not add the video hub? We could do that. And then um, we see we have inputs, outputs, presets. So there's a predefined functionality now slapped on top of the, um, the MK4 here. And if we go to the simulator, we can explore that a little bit. So let's just do that and zoom in. Then you can see the quick class I just selected is selected up here. And it gives me the ability on the upper row to select what is my output. And I can page over to my output NC here. Then I can go back here. And now I can route stuff to that output. Let's just check this with our application, Video Hub application here. So if we can get this to the side and we can see the Video Hub as well, we should be able to uh, maybe just compact this a little bit. Okay, this is nice. Are we looking at the right destination? This is the NC connection eight. And let's just get up here and 
Whoa. Over here. So that's the first NC connection, basically this one, number seven. They should have different names, right? So I go back up here. Any routing I do, we should see that change up there, okay? And vice versa if I do routing up here. So we do routing, and this is all thanks to the quick class. Now, uh, <clears throat> this is about the JSON editor. So what I wanted to do is to uh, basically build something on top of this one. And therefore, I'll just um, go into my JSON editor here and or maybe I'll just remove everything actually. Just uh, do it all straight up from the ground because that's that's actually my intention. Okay, so I have two buttons that I would like to select my output and a few buttons that would select inputs. That's what I wanna do. So in my JSON editor, um, sticking to that, um, I might uh, just hold down control, press space, and that gives me a list of things I can do. You still need to know what these does, otherwise you're sort of lost, but I will create behaviors. And then I go to the next one, I need to select my key. That would be out one selection. Uh, I can pick my name myself, make this an object, and then uh, I can give it a name. No, actually, if I if I do just this and I press save, let me make this window a little better for our screen. Then, um, oh, I have some syntactical thing. Yeah, you need to watch out for the commas all the time. But now you have this behavior out one, which is created here on on the uh, on the layer. The thing is that this one is not mapped to anything yet, so it won't give us uh, anything on the uh, displays. But before we could actually see something, I would want to put in a default uh, feedback, feedback default. We can put in a color real quick here. So we'll just pick color and uh, we'll have a color code. And that color code could be red. We also need an intensity because color is not itself uh, enough. Intensity is a um, off, on, or dimmed. This is how you light up the button. So this would be enough. And I can save this. We still just don't see anything. And that is because out is not routed to anything. And you um, therefore need to have the HVC key map. So HVC key map is what we pick. And this is a, a object array so that on this side you would type in p1 for instance if you wanted to map this to to panel number one but i think the mka2 is panel number two in this case so we'll just type in panel two dot um one probably and we should have out one in other words this key up here or this alias i want that routed to panel two component number one so what is panel two component number one well obviously this is number one this key down here. What these keys are, well, it is exposed. If you click them and you're lucky enough to see it pop up up, up here, then you can see, yeah, it's panel 223 uh, on these different ones. So actually panel 223 would kind of resonate with us having uh, those behaviors uh, on, on these two if I wanted output on these two. Uh, so that's one way you can explore it. Otherwise you could use the uh, raw panel dummies emulator to find it. Um, but the main point here is that we have created a behavior and we have this key map. Okay, to be absolutely honest, it would be sort of easier if we just dragged across these two and created these two behaviors like here, and then we went over to our JSON editor and reloaded because then we, we have them created and you can see that the key map got updated by the front end. So it's I'm not saying that JSON is all the time the right place to, to go for these things. It's maybe some sort of interaction between the two. We want to have a variable as well, and we know we can create variables by going here and typing in a variable name, but we could also go from JSON side. It doesn't matter really where you create this object, but we would create um, variables like this. We need to now have a key for that variable. That would be output select, and, um, and, and then create an object for that. We can have a, I think we could give it a name. And then we need, definitely, we need to have some values. Uh, no, wait, 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 options, options. We like to have options. Option lists is cool because that gives us the, yeah, we can do it either. Or. Value ID would be, um, let's choose six because six would be one of the sources that we want. And then we can also have a name. So we could type in output six and then just copy this and change it quickly to seven. We need to have a comma in between these two. So we have now six and seven. Like that. Okay, save current. Yes, that was successful. You see the variable is created over here. We have those two values that we just coded straight into the JSON. 
I want these um, behaviors to be behaviors D1 and D2 to um, to operate those. So I'll just delete this one and then basically instruct them to use the IO reference I just created up here. So I go in here, um, use the field raw, and that would be variable output page. Is that the name of it? Output select was the name. Okay. Let's just put that in. I, I copy this guy and I copy it down here um, for that one. So um, for this behavior, I kind of want my feedback as well. So I'll just copy this up here. But I think I just want to have dimmed intensity and my output selection color would be blue. Red is such a warning color. So I want to avoid that a little bit here. But I also would like to put in some display content. So let's just press this is control space. Again, it's just reminding you that this is what I'm doing. I can put in a title in this case, call that output. And then I'll put in a text string, text line one, and I could call it out six. And let's just save this and see. Okay, so we got that one with the blue color dimmed. It has output, output six in the display. That's all super neat. And I could now copy this guy down here like that. Save current file and that would be output seven. So this is really me hard, hard coding these things, um, which is uh, yeah, a quick and dirty way to put this button up and put display content in and that's all cool. Uh, I need event handlers right now because I want them to um, to of course, select something. Let me see event handlers. That's uh, an object we need to have. Just select could be one, and then we will have an accept trigger, which is binary. There's of course a little help for the names. Every time I do this, Control Space helps me. So when I press binary, I want to set a specific value. Binary set values is how you specify that. That is a IO reference. So by just uh, typing in the value six, that's the literal value. Then I should have this uh, to to as the value to be set for the for the row up there. I can copy this event handler down here and save, and then change the value of course to seven so that it correctly saves this value. Let's just see um, if I run this in simulation mode. So watch the value over here. It now sets the value to six, seven, six, seven, six, seven. Okay, so that's uh, pretty neat. Hey, this is going great. I love it. Um, I, I think I'll just remove this one out. And if I do so, I should probably also remove it up here from my key map. But it was... Um, so if, if I wanted to have a little input source selection just underneath, I could uh, probably copy paste some of this and just, whoops. Um, take this guy. And actually, I think I want to put it into a layer uh, for the instructional purpose of, uh, of layer. So I'll just put layer here and then inside of that another layer. And then we will just quickly copy this inside of that one. So the, um, the, the cool thing about doing that is that I could, oh, let me see, I'm format. What about formatting code? There's uh, like a comma too much down there. So this is sorted out now. Okay. Now you see, I actually added a layer. We can see we have layers with D1 and D2. I should change those names because right now my my the stuff on the layer up here is actually overriding what I have on the layer just underneath. So that's not super cool, but I will call that I I1. And uh, I think it would be easier for me probably to just remove that so that I have like a single behavior on this one. I need I to be mapped to somewhere. So I guess I may not know exactly what the name of that one is. But since we have, um, if this one was 23, and we could subtract seven and hope this one to be 16. I have no clue if that is correct. But if we save now, we should see it. Ah, okay, it got over there. So it's okay, let's try 18 and see if that yeah, almost, almost. What about uh, 17? Maybe, maybe. Oh, yes. Okay. So that is my I behavior here. I would then need to have it say input. I would love, love to have a different color. But actually, the idea that I had in mind was to, to inherit some of this stuff. So I'm taking uh, this code and moving into the layer because um, no, no, not there, not there, not there. Right here. Okay. 
So I, I can have default feedback for the layer and change this to green. Uh, intensity dimmed would be sort of fine as a default and the display text could have input in the title but I don't want to specify the text line because I want that to happen in the individual behaviors down there so like this okay it means that it says input in three uh, we need to work on the um, <clears throat> on the um, triggers here so let me just fix this one up here. So, okay, we let's just move this out altogether until we have that sorted out. In other words, we, we created this layer. Oof, still have syntactical errors. Where is that? This is the comma that is too much. Okay, thank you. So we have this input three right there. Okay, and the color, the, the green color is inherited from the layers default feedback. It means that as I'm now, if I replicate this, I will get green for all of these, but in three is defined on this one. The label input comes from the general layer thing. So that's just a way you can use default feedback on layers, which is, is pretty cool. We, uh, we want to work with the IO reference that we have from the video hub over here. And um, that is something that could probably be cool to do from the configuration tab as well, but um, yeah, we just decided to do this all on our own. So I'll set up an IO reference for this. And it would be DC for device core, then BMD video hub. I know this to be the name slash one for the device ID number one slash. And now we need to know what that is called. Okay, let's go to the home screen. This is where you would go up here and look at the parameter list and then see if you can find input label i know this would be small for you guys uh wait not input route input to output input to output and it has output dimensions as the second parameter so guys this is what we um we need to uh, to do uh, go back to configuration tab and then in here that is the parameter we use there slash and then the the, the dimension the dimension should be well we could <clears throat> just hard code this to six right now like that and then i sort of need I would prefer to have the um, now I, I, I want to go copy paste a little bit what I had up here because that was easy. Let's let's get this event handler down here in my code. So I just put it in here, uh, save this up. And um, so this is my IO reference routing input to output. It, our destination is output six and the value that will route would be input number three like that. I think this would work. So let's go back and then see if it if it will. Um, we should also see the video hub up here. We are routing to, I think it was output number six. We better choose this one, okay? So if I click this guy, I should get that routing going. Okay, I feel like I need a little bit of help. So I'll just quickly for um, the sake of this, choose the parameter up here, device core, select this one, route, just route input to output. I want to use output number six, and then I use set value. And I want to set this to number four. So uh, what if it was three? Okay, so something is lighting up. You see that here in the simulation view. So um, at least I can now validate that we are we are on four. If I change to wait six, okay, so four, you know that is now lit on and off. So I have something working here. It's um, it's interesting for us now to go to the JSON just reload to see what is the code that was being used in here for the parameter C3 that was just inserted. We use this parent ID set value, which is one of our master behaviors. The value is four for the uh, input. And then this is the IO reference that I'm using. Uh, ah, now I know what is the case um, because we have not implemented feedback. So I was maybe confused that this button wouldn't light up. And that's because we need to have conditional feedback to to light it up according to the changes we, we did in, in the JSON. So let's just remove this out again and uh, make sure that our um, up here on the layer, 
Um, now I just took the value and I'm pasting it in to make, yeah, it is the same. Okay, so I, I got this right. So we, um, uh, we actually should have working save current file. This one should route input three to number six. So let's go and have that shown here. Just like that. Okay, so I click this and it is routing. Okay, so perfect. That that works really well. We um, what I want is to have a yeah conditional feedback is obviously a very important part of that because it was not so helpful that we we couldn't see. This, I think we will quickly go down here and and create conditional feedback uh, on this behavior. So uh, feedback conditional, which is an array. We'll just use 10. Um, string like that okay so we'll say if this guy equals three in that case we want the intensity to be on and we need a comma up here so let's see if that follows along now if uh, if I route differently yep we have the the feedback in place. I want this one to be my camera selector, though, uh, or my uh, output selector. So this is now something I need to insert right here. And uh, we can do that in um, curly braces, or we can also choose not to do so. But basically, to substitute that with the variable output select, all I need to do is to insert this. So I need to make sure that I have that instead of the number six, all the places that are relevant, including down here. So I think that would kind of be in place right now. Save. Okay, we can go back up here. And now if I click six, seven, six, seven, you see that the output select is changing. And uh, also this is uh, sort of changing. So let's just check it out here. If I do that, and if I operate, I should be able to operate this in the simulation. Over here, if I click three, I get three, I can go away from three. If I go to seven, you see it's routing something over here on seven instead. So now you see it is using output number seven. And that's of course not clear up here because I need to implement conditional feedback for that as well, which should be fairly easy to just do. We'll say, um, let's just take the feedback conditional we did right here. This should be quickly done and add it down to D1, we, uh, we will be using our IO reference, which is var output select equals six, then it is on, save, and then this one would be wise to copy down here. All right, so we have this in place. Um, do we not? If output select is seven, then it should light up. Intensity on. And if it is six, it should have intensity on. There's something that this one seems not to like too much. And that is because I did place it on the wrong level in the JSON structure. So it has to be down here. This would have helped a little bit if I did not <coughs> copy paste it in this case. So that's, that's one of the errors that you might find yourself doing. But um, in this case, I think, yeah, now it's, it's better. So let's, let's reload this and then see that the output select indication is also changing right now. Uh, one thing that I would quickly want to do would be to replicate the, um, the I behavior here. You can collapse this if, uh, if you want, and, um, just take this one, copy it like that. And again, like this, change the names. I, two, and three. Now, really, we should make a master behavior out of this and use constants and all kinds of things. But this is not a session that will go that deep into it. It's more showing you how you could use the JSON editor to do this kind of um, editing and um, get away with it. So we'll just stick to that for the moment. But at least you will see the inheritance of the color that we have designed into this whole thing. So we are saving that. And something was... 
Let me see. I want to. Ooh, I need to make sure that this is 18 and 19. Okay, there we go. Now it's much better. Yeah. So, oh, and we also need, yes, of course, to change the values to this would be input number four. Make sure this one is in line with that four as well. And then for this one, it could be input number six and change it the other places that are relevant. Save this guy. And then let's check with the video hop here. Okay, we are on output number seven, four, six, four, three. Go over here. And then how is that? It's also working out pretty neatly. Okay, the last thing I want to quickly show you is a pretty cool um, uh, thing that is um, related to how we could, for the uh, behaviors that selects the output to select multiple outputs at the same time. And um, I wonder if I will succeed in, in doing this because it's a rare thing to do, but I think it is the, um, the, the set mode. And um, yeah, actually, okay, I'm unsure. I can't remember and there's no help to get there. So actually this is where I would now sort of revert back just quickly here to the configuration tab go to this behavior show more and go to our event handler for selecting and then the set mode let's see because we have this one called toggle add remove toggle add remove yes that's the one that i want to have uh, so this would be set i reload this one now so that we see it in our editor for let's just collapse the layers and look here it says toggle add remove is added right here for that event handler. We also need it down here on the D2 event handler. Save this one. Now, so what happens is uh, if we simulate this, you'll notice that um, we can still, yeah, actually, you see, as I'm selecting this, I'm, I'm enabling on and off these outputs. You see, it is basically toggling on and off six on the value of output select and the same over here so that it says seven. And that means right now I have both output six and seven selected and it will show you all inputs that is routed to this one but if i go over here and uh, you can see that and then i click this one i would route both of those outputs to input number six and that's what came out of output uh at the output add remove um i think there's there's definitely a way where you need to press and hold it and this is more advanced because you need in the event handler actually you need two event handlers in that case you need to have one that when you just press it, it's going to set the value. And then you have a second event handler that if you press and hold the key for one second, it is going to toggle. And that would add to the selection or remove from the selection. So that was a little bit of a view into the JSON editor and how crazy things you can do in there. There. there would be um, many more things for you to explore on your own or in future videos from me. But uh, this is just to um, either freak you out or to make you super happy about the depth of how Reactor works and the technology we have created. Uh, I'm not sure you would be looking right now, watching this video, if you were uh, confused by it, because this, this, you, you would have stopped watching a long time ago. Um, but if you are still watching, then rest assured that the home screen is where you can always do easy setup of cameras and videos, uh, routers, sources, and inputs and outputs, and so on. This is how we have designed the system to both cater to those who need quick results and also those who need to customize like crazy in their uh, integration work.